What is up, Misfits? Sherman Hunter today talking to you about the wall walk. And when it comes to the wall walk, it definitely pays to be efficient because a lot of times these are coming come in very hefty doses. We're talking 10, 20, 30. Fuck, how many on the open workout? Like 50 of them. We wanna help you being more efficient in this movement. Now, when it comes to the wall walk, the first thing we're gonna talk about is body position. When it came up in the open this year, a lot of people were like, wall walks, that's like a scale for handstand walking. I've never really done it before outside of like one or two in a warm up in class. I don't know what I'm getting into. So how do I take this movement that's a little unfamiliar and make it a little bit more familiar? So step one is treating it like a handstand walk. So first thing we're gonna get into is a good hollow body position, something we call downward dog or that pike position. So step one, I'm gonna have Hunter get himself in position on the wall. So again, feet against the wall, hands under the shoulders. Step one is achieving a good pike position. So Hunter, go ahead when you're ready. That pike position locks down the rib cage and allows him to walk into the wall without overextending through his midline. So as Hunter walks into the wall, go ahead, Hunter, walk yourself into the wall. We notice that his rib cage doesn't prevent him from getting both of his hands to the end line. Come on down. If Hunter instead were to start with a bridge or an upper, <clears throat> like a seal pose in that wall walk, we're gonna notice that his rib cage prevents him from getting all the way to that finish line, thus making this impossible to achieve. Now, once you understand the downward dog pike position, step two is eliminating unnecessary extra steps. We saw people do this the first time. We saw 10, 12, 13 steps into the wall. We saw a lot of athletes burn out after five or six wall walks. So instead, to get yourself comfortable with it, you want to eliminate extra steps and you want to know where your hands are actually going to go. So if you guys look down at like our Ninja Turtle board here of purple and green, you'll notice that Hunter has X's for his hands go as he walks himself into the wall. And every single time he does a wall walk, he's going to put his hands in the same exact place. So for Hunter, it's four steps to the wall. So we're going to watch Hunter go through two reps. We're going to watch him put his hands in those same positions every single time he goes in. So when Hunter gets back in position, gets to pike first, then he puts his hands in those same spots on every wall walk that he does. Good, so one more, Hunter. Again, hitting that X, X, line, line. Excellent. Go ahead and relax. So when you're getting used to this movement at first, you first have to know how many steps it takes you to get in there. For Hunter, it's four. However, on the way out, it's only three. And that is because whichever hand comes to the line last, the finish line, is gonna be the first one to move. And we'll notice that Hunter actually is able to eliminate one full step. He only takes three steps away from the wall. So as Hunter goes through two more reps, he's gonna hit the purple X's on the way in, and you're gonna notice he hits the green X here, then he goes to the finish line with his right hand before finishing the entire rep with his left hand at the finish line. So as Hunter goes through two more reps, steps to his first tape, second tape, finish line, and then that second hand moves first. Good, and relax. So when it comes time to practice this outside of intensity, which is something we definitely recommend, you wanna know how many steps it takes you to get in, how many steps it takes you to get out, and as you start to get more comfortable, you wanna to try to eliminate extra steps. A great way to practice this is an EMOM. Set yourself up with a eight or 10 minute clock and practice one or two reps on the minute until you feel very confident and then you can start to build in a little bit more intensity, meaning more reps inside of that working window. So instead of one or two, you go to three to four, and eventually you're taking this practice that we've put in an EMOM, and you're able to put it out into intensity, into a workout, which allows you to be efficient, because again, when these come up, there's typically a lot of them, and you want to be as efficient as possible. So again, if you can focus on pike position, eliminating extra steps on the way in and the way out, and making sure that whichever hand gets to the line last moves first, be more efficient. You'll get these done in less time. Give it a shot and we'll see y'all next time.